Probability for Bitsat. Let's get started. What is the probability that you are going to score cent percent in this topic? Well, I am going to say 100% if you are ready to ride the BMW with me. Bitsat's most wanted. Let's roll. Coming to the very very fresh question which came in 2018, the probability of getting 10 in a single throw of 3 fair dice is what? Well, you can go with your conventional way but then I will definitely go the magic apple way. Yes, so what I'm going to do is draw my magic apple here and we need the sum to be 10. Well, the answer to this question would be 27 upon 216, which means on solving, this becomes 1 by 8. That's your answer. Well, those of you who are wondering what magic just happened, you can refer to the probability magic trick and get this answer in 5 seconds. You can get the link by clicking at the i button. Please make a note. Let's check out the question which came in 2017. If all the papers of 4 students can be checked by any one of the 7 teachers. Okay, so 4 students and 7 teachers. Guys, just adjust. I know I am very lazy to write the words in full. Then the probability that all 4 papers are checked by exactly 2 teachers is what? Well, first of all, let's find out what is the base. That means the total possibility. Now, we ha now I had discussed this short trick. Once again, you can refer to my videos in probability tricks where we know if you are, if we have to look at this situation where papers of four different students can be checked by seven different teachers. In this case, the trick that we used is always fixed raised to power variable. What is fixed? The teachers are fixed. And what is variable? The papers are variable. Basically, any paper can go anywhere. So, total would become 7 raised to power 4. Now, coming to, even if you want to understand it this way, you took the first paper, there are 7 options. You took the second paper, you, there are 7 options. Third, 7, fourth, 7. So, 7 raised to power 4. Alright, now talking of the favorable outcomes. Now we definitely know that four papers we want should be checked by exactly two teachers. So first of all boss, out of seven, let's select those two lucky teachers which will be involved in this correction. So that makes it 7C2. So out of seven, I am selecting any two teachers. Now, this thing is very important by exactly two teachers. Now, first of all, Two teachers and four papers going by the same logic can be dealt in two raised to power four ways. Fixed raised to power variable. Right? So you take the first paper, two options. Take the second paper, so the same thing. However, this also has the possibility that both the papers teacher A corrects or both the papers teacher B corrects. You don't want that to happen because you want that four papers are checked by two teachers. It should never happen that all the four are checked by any one of them. So that means we have to subtract those cases where this repetition happens. So minus two. There are two such cases. Either both the either all four papers are checked by teacher A or all four papers are checked by teacher B. So you delete that case from here. Now, now you just have to simplify and mark one of the options. So 7C2 basically makes it 7 into 6 by 2. 2 raised to power 4 is 16 minus 2 that's a 14. And here 7 raised to power 4. Okay, so here we are left with I can cancel this out. This makes it 6 upon 49 and bingo, option B is the right option. Please make a note.
Let's move to the question which came in 2016. It says if three vertices of a regular hexagon are chosen at random, then the chance that they form an equilateral triangle is what? First of all, boss, we all know in order to make a triangle, you need three vertices. Now, in a regular hexagon or for that matter, any hexagon, there are six vertices, right? So, total number of ways are going to be 6C3 because you're picking up six random because you are picking up three random points out of six. Ab baat aati hai regarding your equilateral triangles. Well, very simple. Even if you want to visualize, let's say this is the regular hexagon. You can get, there will be 6C3. That means 20 triangles that you make. But out of these, only two. Yes, only two are the lucky ones which actually are equilateral. Which are going to be one this way. Another the opposite vertices. You can try out the combination in any other way. Trust me, only two of these would qualify. So 2 upon 6 C3, that makes it 2 by 20. So Agayana apka answer, which is 1 by 10. That's your answer. Let's look at the next question again, a little teda meda. Four numbers are multiplied together, okay? Then the probability that the product will be divisible by 5 or 10 is what? So basically, boss, there are four numbers, right? And you multiply them. They are not telling us what kind of numbers. So just four numbers. We all know that it will be divisible by 5 or by 10 will completely depend on its last digit, right? Because if it is divisible by 5, then it has to be a 5 or 0 at the end. And for 10, it has to be simply a 0 at the end. So if I take, if I consider the last digit, Basically, when I multiply, I need to check out the last digit for all four numbers. Okay, First of all, exploring the total outcome. Okay. Now, what happens is, since the numbers are not mentioned, so we can assume the numbers could be 0 to 9, all 10 numbers. Since it could be repetition, it could be anything. The last digit could be 0, could be 1, could be 2, could be 9. So basically boss, there are 10 options for each of them. So that means 10 raised to power 4 becomes the base, the total number of outcomes here. Why? Because we are only looking at the last digits to actually figure out what the number would be. Now, talking about when will the number be divisible by 5 or 10? Let's figure out when will the number not be divisible by 5 or 10. So if I say probability of getting the number to be divisible by 5 or 10 is, I can say 1 minus the probability of the number not divisible by 5 or 10. That means amongst these 10 numbers which are there, on the last place, if I don't want my number to be divisible with 5 or with 10, that means at the last place, I cannot get 0, I cannot get 5. So out of these 10 numbers, 5 and 0 are gone, so only 8 are left. So this means for not divisible by 5 or 10, I, can, I have the option of filling it with any of the remaining 8 numbers. That's it. You just have to figure out this. So this will be 1 minus 4 by 5 raised to power 4, which is 5 raised to power 4 minus 4 raised to power 4 upon 5 raised to power 4. Now here, this is the same as saying 25 square minus 16 square upon 625, which on solving, I can do 25 plus 16. That makes it 41 into 25 minus 16. That makes it 9. So on simplifying, I get 369 by 625 and bingo, here's your answer. Let's move towards the next question. A bag contains five brown and four white socks. A man pulls out two socks. Find the probability that they are of the same color. Matlab, this is one of your halwa questions. So basically, first of all, out of these nine pair of socks, if I have to draw out 2, that means 9C2 is the total possibility. Now, favorable outcome, 
if I have to pull out, so it says a bag contains this, a man pulls out two socks, find the probability that they are of the same color. Same color means either I am pulling out, either I am pulling out two socks of brown color or two socks of white color. So how is that possible? 5C2 and did you hear me clearly? I said either or, or means plus. So plus 4C2. Now obviously there cannot be any intersection because brown is brown and white is white. So on solving this out, you get this will be 5 into 4 upon 2 plus 4 into 3 upon 2 whole upon 9 into 8 upon 2. This will be 20 plus 12 that's 32 upon 72. So that makes it 4 by 9 and yes, that's the correct answer. Make a note. Chalye, let's move towards 2012's question. The probability of simultaneous occurrence of at least one of the events A and B is P. If the probability that exactly one of the A, B occurs is Q, then P of A complement plus P of B complement is what? I think we are super tired after reading the question. But now let's read it line by line so that it starts making sense. So the probability of simultaneous occurrence of at least one of the two events A and B is P. At least one of them. That means either A or B or both. Ye sub hai in your P of A union B. Correct? Because P of A union B always means everything. Next, if the probability that exactly one of the A and B occurs is Q. So this means either only A is occurring or B. So the situation is this way boss. That if you have two, two events A and B. Now I am saying that at least one of them. So it could be A, it could be B, it could be both. Thus I took P of A union B. Now if I am saying exactly one of them. So either I am taking only A or I am interested in taking only B. That means basically I am trying to tell you that probability of A union B minus probability of A intersection B is actually Q. Very simple to visualize using the Venn diagram. Now let's use this statement. So this is given to us as P. So P minus probability of A intersection B is given to be Q. We have to figure out what is P of A complement plus P of B complement. So from here at least we know that probability of A intersection B is going to be P minus Q. Alright. Let's talk about what we have to find. So P of A complement means 1 minus probability of A and P of B complement means 1 minus probability of B. This means I am looking at twice of, this means I am looking at 2 minus probability of A plus probability of B. Alright, now how do I get to this? We all know the famous formula which is probability of A union B is equal to PA plus PB minus P of A intersection B. So from here boss your probability of A plus probability of B is probability of A union B which will be P that is given plus probability of A intersection B which we have just calculated. So from here if I open the bracket I get 2 minus 2P plus Q and yes that is the first option. We analyze this is P, this is Q, we found out probability of A intersection B then we just use the basic formula probability of A union B to find PA plus PB substituted everything and that's it. That's your answer. Now look at the next Hutke question. Five dice are tossed. Okay. What is the probability that the five numbers shown will be different? Matlab, this is too too simple. Now what's happening is first of all you know rolling five dice once or rolling one die five times means the same. So rolling five dice would give us the outcome as six raised to power five. 
करेक्ट नाउ आई वॉन्ट दैट ईच डाई शुड रिफ्लेक्ट अ डिफरेंट नंबर सो दैट मीन्स द फर्स्ट डाई हैज द ऑप्शन टू शो ईदर ऑफ द सिक्स नंबर सो सिक्स ऑप्शन द नेक्स्ट वन हैज द ऑप्शन टू शो ओनली फाइव बिकॉज यू के नॉट रिपीट लाइक वाइज द नेक्स्ट फोर देन थ्री देन टू सो बेसिकली बॉस आई कैन इवन से दिस इज लाइक सिक्स फैक्टोरियल अपॉन सिक्स रेज टू पा फाइव जस्ट फॉर योर सिंप्लीफिकेशन वॉट आई कैन डू इज राइट दिक्स सिक्स राइट दिस सिक्स रेज टू पा फाइव दिस वे सो यू नो थ्री इंटू टू इज सिक्स सिक्स एंड सिक्स गेट कैंसल्ड हियर आई विल गेट टू एंड हियर आई गेट थ्री same way this means 2 and 3 so finally 5 upon 6 3 is 18 18 3 is 54 so 5 upon 54 that means a option was the right option make a note let's look at a simple question which came in 2011 if a and b are mutually exclusive events and if probability of b is 1 by 3 probability of a union b is 13 by 21 then what's probability of a chaliye bana dete hain isko aapka do it yourself question so just to give you the hint mutually exclusive means disjoint disjoint means there is nothing common between the sets that means the probability of their occurrence is going to be zero तो बॉस नाउ यू आर गिवन पी ऑफ बी इज वन बाय थ्री पी ऑफ ए यूनियन बी इज थर्टीन बाय ट्वेंटी वन पी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इज जीरो एंड आफ्टर दिस आई वुड कंप्लीटली जिप अप माय माउथ बिकॉज यू आर गोइंग टू आंसर इट येस सो आंसर फर्स्ट एंड टेल मी इज द आंसर बी पी ए बी पी बी बी पी सी और बी पी डी वेयर बी पी डजन स्टैंड फॉर ब्लड प्रेशर इट स्टैंड फॉर बिट्स एट्स प्रॉबिबिलिटी Please make a note, and you know the top three correct answers would always get named in my upcoming videos. So, did you guys enjoy this video? If yes, then please make sure to give this one a big thumbs up. Share it with all the people around you, guys. We have to solve a lot more questions on BitSat. Also don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that so far by the way it's absolutely free not only that when you check out the playlist section on my channel you will find so many playlists which are based on CBSE which are based on JEE CETs NDA BITSAT and super super shortcuts which can help you crack a lot of math questions so See you with the next video super super soon until then bitsats most wanted bye bye